Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the special meeting of the Englewood Cliffs Mayor and Council. Today is May 3rd, 2019, about 6.06 p.m. I call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, will you please have a roll call? Mayor Cranjack? Here. Council Persons Wu? Here. Sung? Here. Sabari? Here. Hart? Here. Aversa? Here. Oh, is not available. Borough Attorney? Here. Municipal Clerk. Mayor, everyone is present um, except Council President O. Oh. Okay, thank you. Would everyone please rise for the flag salute and remain standing after? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, just please remain standing for um, a moment of silence uh, to commemorate uh, the Holocaust Remembrance Day. That was yesterday, and this is Holocaust Remembrance Week. And the second moment of silence is to commemorate the Armenian uh, Genocide Remembrance Day, which had been on April 24, 2019, but this is our first meeting since then. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you please read into the record your Open Public Meetings Act statement? Adequate notice of this meeting was given to the press and posted as required. Date and time of this meeting was legally given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. This notice is on file with the municipal clerk and posted on the bulletin board. Minutes of this meeting will be made available to the public upon the completion of typing and proofreading by the municipal clerk. Okay. Thank you. Um, I see we have the public portion up now. Is it better to put that after um, the closed session? No, let's do it before. All right, well, if anything changes, I'm going to open up again. Um, so can I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, so if there's anyone from the public, which includes Katie from the record, uh, if you'd like to come up and, and speak, just identify yourself um, and, and state your address. Yes. Lauren Eastwood, Four Wheeler Drive. Um, I sent an email to the Mayor and Council um, and have not received a response. So therefore, I want to read the email in public so that um, everyone knows what was said. I write concerning the selection of a new police chief. As an initial matter, I believe that those officers who made racist and or sexually degrading comments on the audio recordings made by Chief Chaffee, including but not limited to comments about then Councilman Parks English and Councilman Wu and former Councilman Liang's surnames, should not be promoted to the Chief of Police. In my opinion, those comments showed an utter lack of judgment and complete insensitivity to Angle Cliff's many Asian American and female residents. Second, I write about Kane Kim's August 11, 2016 email concerning Lieutenant Tracy, the unredacted version of which was included in the January 2018 through August 2018 Oprah requests and responses, which were posted on and subsequently removed from the borough's website. In my opinion, the incident described by Mr. Kim was as serious as the mockery on the choppy recordings. A copy of the email, which speaks for itself, was attached to my email. Third, I write about a statement in the transcript of Carol McMorrow's deposition, which Lieutenant Tracy's attorney attached to his March 7, 2018 opposition to motion. Ms. McMorrow testified that Lieutenant told her, Tracy told her, somebody told me, Lauren Eastwood called me, and I'm going to omit the words because this is supposed to be a G-rated videotape. Um, I have never called Lieutenant Tracy A, again, omitted words. More importantly, Lieutenant Tracy has never asked me whether the statement allegedly made to him by me is true. Instead, he repeated to the statement to Ms. McMorrow. 
In my opinion, Lieutenant Tracy's repetition of a defamatory statement which somebody allegedly made to him showed poor judgment and was conduct unbecoming an officer and a gentleman. Finally, Lieutenant Tracy attempted to subpoena me in connection with his litigation against the Burke. The subpoena was quashed. The writer to the order of the Honorable Greg A. Padovano, JSC, stated, quote, the court further finds that Tracy's assertion that the discovery is required to address statements made by Mrs. McMorrow to Eastwood to be nothing more than a fishing expedition bordering upon harassment. Tracy has failed to present any basis so as to warrant the discovery of thought. I expect the mayor and council to consider these facts in its selection of Englewood Cliffs' next chief of police. I also expect the Englewood Cliffs Police Department to open an internal affairs investigation into Lieutenant Tracy's statement to Ms. McMorrow and that the Englewood Cliffs Police Department's report to me on the outcome of this investigation will include the identity of the person who defamed me to Lieutenant Tracy. And this is not a news of the Anyone else? Yes. I think it's a pretty serious subject matter. I don't know what's so funny. Council on the park? Speaking about something else. Carol McMorrow, 489 Summit Street. Two points. The first one at the last meeting, Mr. Morfestus got up and was referencing the quote-unquote plan that you guys had originally been deliberating on. And I know Ms. Sabari made also disparaging comments about the plan that the prior Affordable Housing Committee worked on. I have to tell you something. That was not a Republican plan. That was a bipartisan plan, Ms. Sabari, to educate you. Because Councilman Aversa, Councilwoman Park, and Councilwoman O worked together with myself and Councilman Wu and Councilman Park. So it was not Republican. It was jointly worked on. And the big question for me is, it was with the same professionals that are sitting in that room with you now. So I have serious questions for those professionals, why they let us down one road and why you seemed to immediately on January 3rd do an about face. And a lot of questions on that. Next, Councilman Aversa. At the last two council meetings, you were asked about the outcomes of the investigations referenced by Mr. Ruderman at the 124-19 council meeting. You stated at both meetings that you did not yet know the answer and that you were going to look into it. I would hope that you follow up on that question and now that you have the answer. Have you looked into it? Wednesday's meeting is not until Wednesday. No, I'm asking you now. At the last two council meetings, I asked you. You said you were going to look into it. I said I would have one by the next council meeting. I can't hear you. Can you speak into the microphone? I said I would have it by the next council meeting, but not special meeting. So hopefully by Wednesday. I don't promise, but I don't know if I can deliver. I will do my best to have it for you by next Wednesday. Well, I'm sure you would agree that knowing the answers to those very important questions should be known before anyone does any type of decision making on who would possibly be the next chief of police. Well, we will make that decision as we see fit. Thank you. Well, my question to you is, do you not want to know if any of the individuals that you are interviewing engaged in any wrongdoing prior to looking at them or considering them for the next chief of police? Ms. Savard? I really can't discuss the process with you publicly right now. I didn't ask the process. You're making a decision. I didn't ask you about the process. I asked you, do you want to know if any of the officers that handed in. Again, I'm not having that discussion with you today. So you will not answer if you want to know if any of the officers engaged in wrongdoing. I'm not having that discussion with you, Mrs. McMorrow. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Aversa, 
I had also brought to your attention that you were the police commissioner in 2015. And it's my understanding that Sergeant Tracy jumped Sergeant Cotches to become lieutenant. At the same time, Lieutenant Murphy jumped Lieutenant Muir to become the next captain. In turn, you were sued and the taxpayers paid for that as well. It's my understanding that the promotional policy that was utilized at that time was changed and it was not approved by the mayor and council. And you were going to look into whether or not that was an incorrect promotional policy that was used. And if those two individuals had been promoted correctly, you were going to look into that, you stated at the last meeting? The same as before. Wednesday, I hope I to just, have an answer. Okay, I'm just asking. I'm bringing and, it and to I you. Don't, and as I said last meeting, I don't even know if what you're saying is accurate. So it's I will very, find out everything. It's very easy to check. All and you got to do is check the minutes. I will find out for you. Okay, I did a quick look on the borough's website. I didn't see any vote on the council to change the promotional policy. So I'm curious if, uh, in fact, it was changed uh, properly. It just so happened that Lieutenant Tracy benefited and so did Lieutenant Murphy. And I'm wondering if that matters why you want to look into it or not. Separately, when I was getting a cup of coffee at the bagel store about two weeks ago, I ran into a resident. And the statement was stated to me, word on the street is they're going to make Tracy the next chief. I was quite shocked to hear this statement because you just said at the council meeting you hadn't started the process yet for the chief of police. So I'd like to know how this resident knew, apparently spoke to some of you up here, that the next chief of police was going to be Lieutenant Tracy. Did you ask the resident how she knew that? I'd be interested in knowing it too. Um, she should be out there either. I totally agree with you. Yes. Did you ask her? And there was other things that were said about another officer, which I'm not going to repeat right now, but, that I thought did, was disparaging. Did you ask this woman, though, the one you ran into in the baby? I didn't court? say it was a woman, sir. But whoever it was. Okay. Okay. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not under interrogation what? of what my conversation was. Okay, so you that is something. You excuse me. It's fine. I, just I, actually, know you asked. I, I actually did, and do not interrogate me, sir. I didn't invite you. Okay. Your time is on this, Ms. Mark. No, Thank I'm, you. Excuse yes, me. Yes, it is. Five minutes and okay. six seconds, actually. That is very troubling. If you made decisions that Lieutenant Tracy is going to be the next chief of police and you're discussing it with residents that stated that they spoke to some of you up here and did not afford the and did not afford washer whoever and did not afford the other gentlemen whoever they are because I don't know who put their names in they were entitled to a proper process okay but that, thank you for your time that is accurate again exactly. I know where are you getting this stuff from but thank you I guess we're going to find out because because I, guess I, guess I, guess cameras, right? I guess the camera I guess the police story is more accurate than the council so we will appreciate that no, Ms. Sabari, I brought to your attention there's you serious that allegations out there. I'm not discussing with anybody, including you and any You don't have to. I'm going to bring facts to your attention if I hear well, that. That's not a fact. fact. The fact that you hear a rumor in a bagel store it's is not a fact. It's not a rumor. Fact. They it's, said they spoke to you. That's actually a joke. They, so thank you, Ms. Sabari. They said they spoke to you. Well, they didn't speak to us. They also were invited to the Eye on the Cliffs meeting. That's a lot of bagels and wops. Oh, Eye on the Cliffs. I wasn't invited to that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, you know, just, um, okay, it's, it's okay. Um, I think that for the police committee, and I want you all to listen to this very carefully, you should have all the relevant documents in a folder for each of the applicants. Uh, everything that's happened with them, to them, from them while they've been employed here so that your committee can make a good decision. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to ask the borough administrator to make sure that she collects everything for everyone who applies. I prefer not to be interrupted by you when I'm speaking. So I'm not talking to you actually. I'm talking to the borough administrator. I'm asking her, actually I'm telling her to make sure that the folders are complete with everything that should be considered uh, for an applicant. It's fair. It's like any other promotion, any other position. This is not special. We've got a policy in place of how this has to be done, and it's no longer who's best friends with the chief. And as chair of All the right. committee, I'll make sure that everything is being followed. And I'll make sure I hold you to that. Don't you? Don't okay. doubt it. I do doubt it because I'm talking to you, but yes. You would. I, history predicts the future. I have plenty of doubt. History predicts the future. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Russell Perino, 220 Fairview Avenue. 
troubled by, I guess, a couple of things. Uh, first is that uh, certain individuals have more information than the chairman of the planning board and potentially the mayor as well. Uh, this publication, I in the Cliffs, is coming out with information that, from what I understand, is not in the public purview. I'd like to know how they're getting this information. Uh, they've made salacious attacks on the planning board. It seems to be increasing. I guess as the as the the uh, council here is marching towards, uh, I call surrender uh, to the affordable housing folks here. Um, it seems the planning board is is the punching bag and a scapegoat. And I've tried to elaborate as succinctly as I could before, uh, without violating my role as as a planning board member. Um, but some things that were, were stated that are not just questionable, but outright lies. And I think it's my duty to, to appear before this council and to reject those statements as not being factual, uh, but being false. And, and one thing that comes to my mind, and I've been sort of sitting quietly for the past few months, uh, taking, taking the hits on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the chin, and I said, you know what, now it's time. Decision on the planning board matter, uh, Normandy v. Uh, planning board, uh, was handed down. And it's a little quick story as to how that happened. The um, trial was held, and Judge Farrington asked the parties, including the borough council, if they would like for that decision to be held in abeyance. Normandy agreed to do so, right? The planning board agreed to do so. In other words, we didn't feel any need for that decision to be rendered because if it was, it would most likely trigger other litigation activity, right? Common sense. Karen Geiger jumped up and wrote a letter in saying, Judge, I really want that to be released. Uh, Al Wunsch, on behalf of the borough, wrote a letter to Judge Farrington. I really want that to be released. And the question I have is, who authorized the borough attorney to request that that decision be released? What would possibly be the purpose of releasing that decision when clearly there's a bigger fish to fry here? If the affordable housing case is going to be settled in its entirety, the planning board issue goes away, right? So it's just common sense not to encourage further legal activity costing the borough more money. So if you read that publication, which is a complete piece of trash, the, it's not just insinuated, it's stated that planning board spending more money recklessly, blah, 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 right? Paraphrasing. So, Councilman Wu, did you authorize the, the uh, attorney for the borough to write a letter to Judge Farrington saying, please release the decision of the court? No, I did not. Mayor? No. Okay. So I'm not sure if anyone on the council wants to... Uh, Ms. Park, the point is that somehow we want to know what the decision it, rendered. Because that it costs, no I'll that tell you why, I'll tell you why, it costs the borough money. How does it cost the borough money okay. to know exactly what I'll it's I'll tell you why. What happens is, because once the decision is rendered, excuse me, it's my time, right? I, Normandy filed motions as well. Okay, so that court decision created activity from both plaintiff and defendant, both sides. Right? So, indeed, money was going to be expended. By, as a result, if you're an attorney, you should know that when a decision is rendered. decision rendered. Yes. As a party to the litigation, right. I would know what the decision is rendered. That's common sense. To say, it's well, not. you know what, I'm going to turn a blind eye and just wait until it, what happens. It's not a blind it's eye. It's no sense. Okay. Well, you're an attorney. I would hope no. that you know it. The idea is it's a matter of saving judicial resources and saving money. The only reason why... Saving money why would healing our Okay, but Normandy and the, and the defendant and the plaintiff both felt that they could sit tight for a while, okay, because there's other issues at play here, the bigger affordable housing litigation. We all know that. So my point is, isn't it obvious the reason why Karen Geiger wanted it released was, A, if the planning board was found to be, uh, uh, how should I say, lose, or in some means losing that litigation, that then she could use it in a, in a political way, maybe? Sure enough, a couple of weeks later, what happened? There's three pages of a newsletter that went to every resident of the town trumpeting that she was right all along. It's as transparent as the day is long, what her intent was. And she gets out and marches 
these these documents, these documents, this newsletter out to the residents, which is hogwash. Okay, it's not truth. It's full of mistruths, false statements. Okay, so that's an example which is glaring to anyone who understands the process. Right? If plaintiff and defendant both say it's okay, we'll sit tight. It's very odd that. The Albie Wunsch and 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 uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, uh, Gaga, thank you. You know, thought it was so necessary to hear it. Okay. So the second point I want to make is both the planning board adopted and the governing body endorsed a housing plan. Okay. Well, I've heard statements saying that it's inadequate. There's something called a right to cure. Right, and what that means is, if Judge Farrington was to decide this case, and she decided that our IDP was going to be higher than what our plan was going to provide, the borough should have the right to cure that number, right? Um, and for the misconception to be put out there that this plan was deficient, is is I feel inaccurate. All right, because there was a legal process. There was a strategy in place. I'm not going to disclose what it was. This was all thought through a long time ago, and it's this council's decision to decide how they wish in the in the future. But understand, there was a strategy back then. Now, I'm not sure what is being heard in the back rooms. I've been left out of it. And I want to make it clear on the record, all right, that since January the seventh, I have not had a meeting. I have not had a conference call with anyone on this council regarding the affordable housing litigation. So when it does settles. And people are unhappy with the results. Make it, make it clear that I have had no involvement at all since this uh, governing body took over in January. Sabrina, you have like 20 seconds. Uh, Mr. Rivera says keeping time yeah, today. Uh, that's that's the function tonight is to keep time. Just, just, just something that I wanted. I was work, looking through our affordable housing plan again, and Mike Mistretta had uh, delineated delineated. Uh, 15 acres of land being being available to Normandy as a result of where he thought the subdivision line was, or should be, let's say. You know, when you talk about the planning board and, and, and what they did and, and how they decided that case, if that subdivision line was where Normandy wanted it, it would have been 20 acres, all right? And if you settle this case as night follows day, they're probably going to demand that you do that larger area. The goal of the planning board, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. I have to be a little careful what I say because I will not show any bias to Normandy. They're developers. I'm a developer. I understand the process. They have their rights. The state legislature has left us in a situation that we're in right now, right? We need to do it. Uh, we need to be compliant. I have no issues with that. But I do feel that this borough should continue on the path that was laid out over the past two years, and it should not be surrendering to a huge multifamily project at the end of Sylvan Avenue. Thank you. I agree with you. Uh, anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? Uh, I just want to mention that the eye on the cliff that Mr. Perino mentioned, and that you probably get in your mailboxes and hopefully throw right in the garbage, that that is not a newsletter. That is a political campaign document. And it was birthed by Geiger and Sabari. And, and so it pretends to be a newsletter, but it's nothing more than a political rag. Uh, you know, and that's what I just want to keep reminding the public at home also, and I'll keep doing this, and I'm sure Geiger will probably change her name to something else once everybody gets on to her because that's what she does. But I also want to mention that. Um, the make the motion close to the public. Yeah, you want to, is anybody else in the public? Nobody? Okay. All, All right. in favor? Aye. All right. So um, regarding the affordable housing obligations, I want to say a few things before I go into closed session, uh, and, and you'll understand why. Uh, so regarding the. Uh, the housing obligations, the affordable housing obligations of the borough and the litigation with Normandy Development, Fair Share Housing Center, and uh, resident Karen Geiger. There she goes again. I wanted to reiterate my position to make clear the relevant facts for our citizens. I've done this before. I'm going to keep doing it because I keep getting, I keep getting excluded from the actual meaningful process here. So 
Uh, I know Saranian and Wunsch and Mistret are in the other room listening, so listen up, guys, because I'm coming in there. Uh, I have always said that I oppose any governmental taking of property or redistribution of property or income. I have also always said publicly that, one, I believe in full compliance with all laws, whether or not I agree with them. And this one I don't agree with, but we are going to comply with it. And two, I believe in home rule, meaning that Anglo Cliffs gets to solve its own problems and compliance with applicable laws such as the affordable housing scheme that's been thrust upon us. We heard from our special affordable housing litigation counsel, Jeff Serenian, over the past year that the law known as Mount Laurel started in the mid-70s, and from 76 to today, Englewood Cliffs um, didn't have any affordable housing units. So this is a failure from prior administrations, and we're dealing with it. Normandy Development purchased the former Unilever property. I really wanted the people at home to understand this. They, they purchased the former Unilever campus and asked for a commercial subdivision and certified that purpose to our planning board. Um, under the penalties of perjury. So they actually certified to our planning board that they were going to redevelop it as a commercial property. Our planning board, led by Russell Perino, rightfully denied Normandy the request to subdivide the property. Normandy then sued the town to obtain the right to build. I think at that time they wanted 835 residential units. And that was, again, after they just certified that they were going to do a commercial subdivision. So under, un, under applicable New Jersey law, s such a residential project would require us to have 20% of that be residential units set aside for affordable housing. So there you see it. It's an unhealthy alliance that was created by a for-profit developer, Normandy, and a not-for-profit organization, Fair Share Housing. Included in that unhealthy alliance are the New Jersey courts and their special masters, uh, whereby developers ask for permission to build residential units on a commercially zoned property because they, you know, out of the kindness of their heart, they want to do that. And the Fair Share Housing Center, New Jersey courts and court masters, along with cottage industry of lawyers and planners, they acquiesce to this land grab under the color of law. This is what's been going on in New Jersey. This is what's ruined New Jersey. To sum it up, in New Jersey, we have non-elected judges, non-elected special court masters, and a non-governmental, not-for-profit organization grabbing away your land and giving it to developers under the cover of law, which is basically resulting in a form of socialism. I know I've been criticized for calling it that, but I've been calling it that. And the result of that is crony capitalism. So it all goes hand in hand. So now, you know, welcome to, um, you know, crony capitalism and socialism. So then you add to this mix the attorneys and planners on both sides who have made it a career destroying New Jersey, and you end up with a New Jersey that is pushing out the 2% of the taxpayers who pay 40% of, of New Jersey's taxes, right? This is not sustainable, and we should fight to keep 800 Sylvan all commercial without any residential development. So it's been quite a drama dealing with this matter. We followed to the letter... Of, Everything our special counsel, Serenian and planners, Mistretta, told us we had to do in 2018. We did everything they asked us to do. We created a plan to build only 100% affordable housing projects so as to not blow up our infrastructure and schools. My plan, our plan was viable. Our counsel, our attorneys, our planner agreed. This council actually agreed in the first week of January. The old council agreed. <coughs> so what happened since January 3rd or 7th? I, don't, I have no idea. I'm going to go into closed session now and try to find out. Uh, but you should also know that Mr. Serenian and Ms. Stredda were challenged by the 2018 Council all throughout 2018. We always included everyone on the Council in the decisions. It was bipartisan. It really and truly was. We, we informed them. They knew everything that was going on. Uh, former Council President McMorrow and, and Russ Perino did a great job. And they've been excluded from the process. So again, to Mr. Perino's point, don't don't blame him. He had nothing to do with this. So then came 2019 with Ed Averse's Democratic Council majority. On January 7th, our affordable housing attorney Serenian stood in front of this in front of this borough's planning board and public and declared that our plan was good, viable, and reasonable. He also mentioned that we had the law on our side in case the court opined that we need more affordable housing units. In that case, Serenian made clear that the borough should be permitted to cure any shortfalls on its own and not be subjected to the toxic alliance that I mentioned earlier. 
Council Men's Averse and Sabari, Mr. Serenian and Borough Acting Council of Van Wunsch then excluded me from all meaningful discussions and they decided without a valid explanation to completely change the approach of Englewood Compliance. Yeah. Completely changed it. And they scrapped our plan. To be clear, I never supported building any residential units on the former Unilever site and I still do not. Councilman, Councilman Wu has remained consistent as well throughout with his votes and his views. So what changed? Why would the Democrats on council, including Borough Councilwoman O oh, and Mr. Serenian and, and Aversa and Ms. Greta, all completely change their strategy? I don't know. What side deals were done? I don't know. Who would benefit? I have no idea other than Normandy. So Why not fight for our right to solve our affordable housing obligations? Why was I excluded? Why was I excluded from all these discussions? At our last meeting, I was told by Council well, Councilman you. Woman uh, Sabari. Councilman, uh, Councilman Woman Sabari said that, she, <laughs> that, that, that she did not have to share any details of what was going on in mediation. That's what she said, and she said that Serenia told her. That's okay. I'm not getting into details. I'm just talking procedure. I'm just talking procedure. So here's the here's the for the problem. I, I know I know the truth first, and you're reacting. And you will hear the whole. I did not have any updates. I did not have any updates from any of them from March 31 from March 31 to April 24th Serenity, I'm looking at you, so leaving me, and now you, to wonder what shenanigans were going on. And yet another epic example of how rules change. Another example of how rules change, right? This is epic, right? But they don't apply to Democrats here. They don't apply to you, Council Mr. Savari. You live within 200 feet. You live within 200 feet of that property. You are conflicted. You are conflicted. But listen, you're still involved. You're conflicted. And I ask for everyone's in further pondering that Ms. Sabari is in the residential real estate You're business. Because you don't have control. No discussion of uh, the last quarter would be Once complete again, without mentioning, you don't interrupt me. You can speak after no, me. You can speak after me. No, not when you sit up you there making false so conversations. I will not. Every meeting. I will not. You're hearing that you can move that you. All right. Okay, you can all speak after me. You can speak after me. No, well, then let me finish, it, or you can leave no, if you want to hear me. I know. So now, now so no discussion of the last quarter would be okay. complete without mentioning, uh, without mentioning Special Borough Council Al Wunsch, how he inserted himself into the affordable housing litigations and aggressively went out of his way to exclude me from any meaningful participation. Remember, he represents all of us and excluded me. That, that's him clearing his throat because it hurts, right? Now here's an attorney without any substantive affordable housing experience who entered the process on January 3rd, 2019 and hasn't a clue of what took place in 2018. He's making your decisions. He's shifting the value from your property to someone else. Again, this is the guy. Correct. He also has no meaningful affordable housing experience as an attorney beforehand. Thanks to Verse and Sabari, we have been paying Serenia and Wunsch to work on the same matter, two lawyers on the same matter, even though Serenia was retained to do so alone. Right? So maybe. Well, there's also litigation. So the borough, the, the, the borough has paid much over eighty thousand dollars this year. Eighty thousand dollars this year. Okay. All right. Yeah. So then, talk about uh, Aversa and Savari, you guys. Well, just, to so that, just to put into that. Just to put salt in every one of our citizens' affordable housing rooms. I scheduled this meeting on a Friday night. You scheduled the meeting on a Friday night. That's to do it by May 3rd. They didn't want, you didn't want people to know. I objected. You could have done it some other time, but you did it on a Friday night. That is not true. For the people at home, there's no one here really. There's like seven people here. It was scheduled. And, and one is Normandy, one is the Bergen Record, a former newspaper. And, and <laughs> you cannot do it. Alright, so here's the thing. If you're at home, you see this, please yeah, join me in fighting to keep that good for your housing. Yeah, uh, and that's it. Okay. All right. So, should I have a motion to go into closed session? No. So, move. Second. 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 Uh, you gotta take a vote. Three, you gotta take a regular vote. Let me just take the vote to go into closed session. Regular resolution. You gotta take a regular vote. Yep. We always did the, you've been here always. You know what? Let me just take the vote. Councilpersons, and then I'll read it. Councilpersons Wu? Yes. 
Some? Yes. Proper. Sabari? Yes. Park? Yes. Aversa? Yes. Oh, is absent. Mayor, I'm going to... All right. I'm going to read the resolution. The mayor walked off the dais. Getting water. Okay. Resolution 19114. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Angola Cliffs has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain confidential matters. Whereas the minutes of the closed session will remain confidential as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act or shall be released when there is no further need for confidentiality as authorized by, by the by the borough attorney. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, I'm reading a resolution. Excuse me, I'm reading a resolution. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council, the borough of Ingle Cliffs, will go into closed session for the following matters as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act and JSA 10 colon 4 12. Pending litigation regarding borough of Ingle Cliffs, docket number BRL 611915. Data on Sylvan Avenue, docket number BERL 6918, 800 Sylvan Avenue, LLC, docket number BERL 908817. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to come out of closed session, please? Can I have a motion to adjourn? No, no, oh, all in favor? Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, Mayor, I just want to. Uh, I want to report that Councilman Song had to leave during closed session. And that's that's it. I just have an announcement. Okay. okay. Um, I just want to say that there is a Little League opening tomorrow. Um, and I don't know if the email went out, but if there is rain in the morning, um, I believe it's going to be, be held at Upper School. And Dwight Gooden is going to be there. So it's going to be very exciting at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Um, if not at Woody Field, at Upper School. Nice. Have a motion to adjourn? So we'll All in favor? Aye. So at 9.30, no rain at Woody Field? Mm -hmm. If rain, then it's going to be